Anywhere here? Yeah, anywhere that looks good to you. Okay, zoom in a little there, try. Tammy, please. It's good. That we'll just have to see. Was worth the try. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not going to be anything you guys can work with. Okay, Nicole, we've got some viewers who are following along with that data feed, and they um, are curious why they might be seeing the oxygen uh, drop over the last hour. Now around 12, what might be causing this area has some concerns, I think, for low oxygen as well. There's um, a lot of ocean acidification studies and, and things um, to look at ocean chemistry out here. I couldn't say whether this is normal for the area, so... I don't know, but I'm glad people are making use of our new mm -hmm. uh, graphs that we're putting out there so that they can follow along and make these observations with, with us. This? Do you uh, okay. remember what kind of concentrations were we seeing in Santa Barbara Basin? Were we yeah, we were seeing basically zero, right. uh, on the move again? no oxygen. So we got a ways to go. Bridge nav. There. We can resume uh, 0 0.2 knots on the same bearing. Yeah, so um, for those just for those just joining us, we've had the sable fish with us for a couple hours now. These are sable fish, an import, um, a um, you know, an opportunistic predator fish here, uh, a major target of the commercial fisheries of the west coast of the United States and Canada. Part of, you know, the largest ground fish catch in the West Coast is in Oregon. And sable fish make up a significant portion of that ground fish um, catch. They're caught by trawl, pot, and line. And, you know, to, to the question specifically, like, why are they here? I don't, I don't think we have a great answer for that. But we're just observing that they're here and it's... Pretty cool to find them along the same feature where we're seeing these methane seeps in this complex hey, ecosystem. Randy, bump your camera up a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, we know that fish tend to like hard grounds. Um, it's good habitat um, and good nursery grounds, things like that. So could be related to those reasons. Mm -hmm. That was actually you know, kind of an ancillary goal of this dive in particular. Most of the seeps we're going to look at are just in more sedimented areas uh, they won't have as much carbonate if if any um, so being you know unexpected but at the same time of all the sites this would be the one where we would expect to see fish and boy did we yeah and <laughs> yeah. boy did we now if anyone has a count anyone at home uh. who's been counting <laughs> don't ask someone will send yeah. us your numbers send us your numbers also don't blink yeah <laughs> make sure you don't count the same one twice Hard to count them this way. Well, those fish are determined to ships, uh, ships move in. If you know this, ruin our Roger. last views of the sea floor here. They really are. <laughs> What is the largest biological sample that we collect? What's the biggest thing that would fit in the bio box? I think coral, uh, deep sea coral for special studies um, where scientists need to look particularly at the base. Mm -hmm. And so those can be pretty large samples that we also just carry in sort of the manipulator at the end.